Yeah, y'all know what it is. It's your boy Chameleon at a mixtape Messiah. My dog smacked and came out to Texas yeah. to holler at me. You know what I'm talking about? We out here in my custom car shop, man, with my dog Big E, my business partner. We out here making the rides look fly. We call it Fly Rides. And everybody's seen the Turn It Up video, you know? They seen the Candy Red Car from that. That's one of the projects that we did. We put it in the video and we make these cars famous out here, man. You know what I'm saying? More than just rappers being famous now. You know, I come out from the bank and people taking pictures with my car now. You know what I'm saying? So we, we do that big out here. We got all the custom cars and, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do it big. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 you doing, you know, any calls for any celebs, any rappers? Man, like David Banner just came through today, man, so we about to hook him up, man. And shout out to Pimp C, man. Free Pimp C. Pimp C's free right now. He off lock, man. He just actually bought the car from me from the Turn It Up video, so it's no longer mine, you know what I'm saying? Straight up, man. And this is the car right here. This is a, a classic custom L dog, you know what I'm saying? Like what we do is we'll take an old car and turn it into something, you know what I'm saying? It started off old and now you got the candy paint out here. You hear everybody rapping about this candy paint thing in Texas. This is what they mean by candy paint. It's so, so glossy, it looks like it's wet, you know what I'm saying? It's more than just in the wraps, man. We really, really riding like this, man. Drop top all day, man. And it, you know, everything is custom. Everything's new. You know, we got pop trunk. When we say pop trunk, a lot of people here say pop trunk and don't know what it means. It's a motorized trunk that raises up and down and shows, you know, your hood or whatever, you know what I'm saying? what that is right there man and the candy l dog man smack dvd you in the presence of the finest comedian of the mixtape of shia you know what i'm talking about straight up what's the average price range to get your whip done up like this man? man right here man this is an expensive car right here man it's a lot that went into this car because not only does it look good on the outside it's good on the inside you know i think at first it had like 99,000 miles on it but now i got you know, it's like a brand new car, man. The engine, everything is straight on it. You can even see the, the brand new fresh floor mats. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. Everything is custom from the from the wheel to the to the automatic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pumps that raise up the trunk. You know, you see all the leather. Everything is brand new. You know, and, and, and this is a drop top L dog, man. And, and, and you know, we got the TV screens. We got the in dash. Uh, you know, TV screen, radio player, you know, everything's custom, man. This is a nice car, so it costs a lot. So if you're trying to get your car done up, it could, it could be anything cheap to, you know, a lot, depending on what you want to spend and what you're trying to do to your car, you know. But it, you get what you put into it, you know what I'm saying? What do you think this ran at the end of the day do all this shit for the car? Man, dog. Man, it's a good, it's a good, man, it's a good 60000 in this one, man. A good 60000 It's an old school God, some people would be like, why would you put 60000 into an old school car? It's just what we, we do, man. We take something that's nothing and turn it into something, man, you know? We do that, and it's an investment at the end of the day, man. It, it, it helps, you know what I'm saying? So you and Paul was a group. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean, yeah. what happened? I mean, did y'all fall out or what happened? I mean, at one point, me and Paul used to be like brothers, man, and I tell everybody that, you know what I'm saying? We grew up together. It was, it was, it, it was you know, just like any other brother relationship. But then, you know, we started growing into two different people. And a lot of people ask me, what does that mean? It's like, you know, the, the way we were younger, when we were younger, man, we started growing up and started having different ideas, different goals, and it started being a lot of arguing. And then there was a lot of instigating. A lot of people would come to him, say stuff, and tell him stuff in his ear. People would come to me, and then we started kind of clashing a little bit. And then we had some problems, you know what I'm saying? But right now, we straighten it out, you know? We ain't, we ain't just kicking it every day, but we ain't tripping no more, you know? And, and that goes with anybody you know what i'm saying i'm not beefing in 2006 man i'm just focusing on my career i'm doing good making money my family's eating i'm not tripping about nobody man straight up man is there one incident in particular that made y'all you know what i mean go your separate ways or whatever man i can't really call it man i can't really call it it's a lot of stuff it just built up over time it started getting worse and worse man everything started getting real real serious for a minute and there's some stuff i could speak about on camera some real real personal stuff that happened and some stuff that made me mad and i'm pretty sure he could say the same thing but you know, I, I don't put family business like that out there, man. Because when you do, I always learn that it makes it worse. You know what I'm saying? The more people know, the more fuel they have to make it worse and instigate. You know, so um, I'm gonna keep it like that. You know, we just agree to disagree. Paul doing this thing right now, I'm doing mine. That's what it is. Could we have to see y'all doing an album together again? Yeah, people always ask that, man. I, I couldn't see it happening, man. You know, even musically, we've grown in two different directions, man. I feel like we're two different artists, and I just, I just couldn't see it happen. I'm gonna do my thing, you know. But he gonna do his too. Up, man. So, yo, man, in the past, you know, you've expressed that you and Mike Jones don't really fuck with each other either. What's that about? I mean, me and him, he wasn't never like my homeboy or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really know Mike too well. You know what I'm saying? I, I had, you know, some conversations with him and, and I knew him from affiliations with, you know, Swisher House and everybody. We hung around the same people. But I didn't really know him like that. So, when me and him got into it, it wasn't nothing for me to be like, man, nah, 
you know. And it was all basically over the Paul Wall stuff, you know. When me and Paul split up, it was like a real personal situation. I felt like he got involved in stuff that he shouldn't have gotten involved in. But like I say, that's about as much as I say on an interview about that whole thing because I done done my explaining, but right now I'm done with that, man. I don't want people to always be putting me like a chameleon there, be beefing with everybody, because I'm not. I'm not even beefing with Mike Jones right now. I'm just doing my thing. He doing his thing, I'm doing mine. And the magazine still be trying to put little comments in there and little slick comments to, to make it look like chameleon as this big bad guy that be beefing with everybody. See me, man, I'm a little nigga, man. I just be, you know, just getting money, doing my thing, you know. I don't, you know, wish no harm on nobody. I just grind and trying to get it, so. It is what it is, man, but I feel like I'm standing on my own two feet anyways and nothing nobody can say to, can stop me from getting where I want to get, you know what I'm saying? So where you at with the album right now? Uh, right now we certified gold and we did that off of one single, the Turn It Up single, you know? A lot of people was doubting me. People didn't think I was going to sell 100,000 the first week. And then when I hit that crack over 100,000, 130, 40,000 records the first week, they was like, what? And that was the best debut on a um, uh, from a new artist on Universal Records, you know what I'm saying? Since 2003. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta understand, I dropped in the fourth quarter, and I'm a new artist, and the fourth quarter is hard to drop in the fourth quarter with a lot of big acts dropping, and I still did good. And now I'm finna try to take it to platinum with my second single. You know, I'm gonna stay in this future with the mixtapes, do a lot of stuff, messing with smack. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to get these other markets, man, keep it, keep it moving. Let's see what's going on over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. It's courtesy of uh, Johnny, Johnny the Jeweler, man. You know what I'm saying? King Johnny. He hooked that up, man. I actually mess with both Johnnies, man. Both Johnnies out here be hooking me up, man. And, and, and you know, we always got to keep it fly out here, man. Already, man. I'm messing with the multicolored diamonds right now, man, being that I am the chameleon there. <laughs> Show niggas your grill, nigga. Already, already, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? That's invisible set, man. And we do those too, man. You know, matter of fact, I'm, I'm hooking boys up. I just hook, hook man, links up with a grill. And people starting, ever since the grill song came out, everybody talking about grills now. You know what I'm saying? But it's all so good you if you want to girls too? Yeah, yeah, man. See, me and Paul started off a long time ago messing with this dude named Crime. And Crime live out here in Houston, and he's the one who actually really taught me and Paul how to do the grills. I didn't really take it too serious because when we used to do it, it was a lot of hassle. A lot of niggas would be coming up to me like, where my grill, where my grill the next day? And you was doing that for a $1,000 profit, 2000 I was like, man, I need a bigger lick than that. And I don't want to be dealing with the hassle. So, But now it's a lot of niggas coming to me. I just do it for my homeboys now. If anybody I know want one, I hook them up. You know what I'm saying? I don't really take that too serious as I do the car game, you know what I'm saying? What's up, man? So, yo, man, before we get up out of here, man, anything you want to let the streets know? Man, let the streets know Chameleon is here, man. I'm a career artist, man. I know, honestly, in New York, man, I, I be out there a lot, man, now that I'm with the label, and, and I be hearing, I be keeping my ear to the streets, and a lot of people's like, man, what's up with this dude Chameleon there? I hear the South talking about him. I, you know, what's up with him? I don't understand why they why they feel him like that. Man, you gotta understand, people out here, man, it's more than just the rap to these people, man. They seen me turn nothing into something, man. They know it's the truth when they seen it. So now, they like riding with me because of that. And then, not only because of that, because they feel like I'm one of the few people out here that could really spit, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, you just need to listen to it with an open ear and give a nigga a chance, man. A nigga ain't, you know, fabricating my story, talking about, you know, I'm killing niggas or, you know, uh, or, 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 you know, blowing niggas up or walking around with a bulletproof vest every day, man. I'm just a young nigga that's just in the game to get some money, man. And, and that's my story, man. And, you know, I want to get my family out of poverty and, 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 and you know, watch my family living good. And I did that and people respect that. So that's why they mess with me. And you should give me a chance because of that. Just because of that. You know, all my niggas out there grinding, you on your mixtape grind, whatever, man. And you're trying to get it, man. If you want it bad enough, you can have it. Everything I was doing, everybody told me it wasn't going to work. Everybody told me it wasn't going to work my whole career. That's why I named my album The Sound of Revenge. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like success is the best revenge you can have in this world when people doubt you. So that's what I did. I'm getting revenge right now. All this, everything you see, man, is revenge for everybody that told me I wasn't going to be able to make it. Standing on my own two feet, doing it my way, and that's what it is, man. Camilla Terry. Smack DVD.